similar right triangles. Recall from the basic properties of geometry that two triangles are similar if two pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. And if two triangles are similar, then the lengths of corresponding sides are in proportion. This is an idea that is true in general. We're going to be looking at it very specifically in the case of similar right triangles, where one of the pairs of angles is a right angle. Having a right angle means we can also involve the Pythagorean theorem if need be, and it will give us a couple of other really nice properties. But the basic idea here is we are going to be looking at some triangles. And let's go into a more challenging one to get used to the idea of identifying where your triangles are. All right, so here we have a figure that's given to us with two right angles in it. and five points marked as A, B, C, D, and E. We know that angle A is congruent to angle E they're both right angles. We also have this really nice behavior at point C. There's a property of geometry called vertical angles. When you have two lines that intersect each other, the angles that are opposite each other, like the two angles I marked here, are called vertical angles. and vertical angles are always congruent. So at C we, or at uh, point C, we have vertical angles. To be technical in the geometry of this, we should call this angle ACB is congruent to angle DCE. I'm not too worried about the notation. That's not going to come up anywhere else in this course. But we now have two um, pairs of congruent angles, uh, angles A and E, and the two angles at point C. That's what it takes. Two pairs of angles are congruent, so the triangles are similar. And I'll go ahead and mark that up here, just where I have some space to put it. The first triangle I can name however I'd like. ABC seems like a nice thing to do. The second triangle, I do have to be careful because by convention, we name the triangles so that corresponding angles are placed in the same order. In this case, A corresponds to E. So since I listed A first, I have to list E first. B is going to correspond to D. Those are the two angles that we don't know anything about. So since I had B second, I have to have D second in the second one. And then C corresponds to itself. Right. Again, the notation there is not the important thing, but thinking about the triangles is important. All right. So with that, we have some similar triangles. 
And when we have similar triangles, we should be able to solve for some side lengths. So let's go ahead and fill in some measurements. Let's say that we know that the side between B and C measures 1.8, and then from C to D measures 8.0. Between D and E measures 5.5, which tells me that this drawing is not really drawn to scale, but that's okay. Um, and then between A and B is the thing we're looking for. When you have two similar triangles, corresponding sides are in proportion. So let's go ahead and start with the triangle that we are interested in. The side between A and B is the thing we're trying to figure out. And in that triangle, the side between B and C is the one we know. Now let's look at the other triangle. The side between A and B corresponds to the side between D and E. This is the convenience of having been careful about how we named these similar triangles, A, B, E, D. Or D, E, doesn't really much matter. And then B, C is going to correspond to C, D. Envision taking that bottom triangle and kind of rotating it around at point C and you'll see that that's the sides that are in the same positions. So now that we know where our similarities are, we can start playing our matching game or just substitute in. AB is X, BC is 1.8, uh, DE is 5.5, and CD is 8.0. I'm going to fly through actually solving this proportion fairly quickly. At this point, you should be very comfortable with the idea of solving a proportion. Let's see, 5.5 times 1.8 is 9.9. .9. And then let's take 9.9 .9 and divide by 8.0. And since we have two digits on everything, I'll round to two digits here as well. Somewhere in the ballpark of 1.2. 1.2 um, to be more exact. If I had whole numbers, I might have left things as a fraction. Uh, if you're asked for an exact value, leaving things as a fraction might be better. Um, but given that the numbers in the first place had decimal points in them, uh, being asked about decimal approximations is much more likely. <laughs> 